first time I went to Diamond, I was a little bit overwhelmed with the whole the whole thing that is Diamond. It's a massive, beautiful, shiny building and the labs are incredible and there is everything you could ever want. It's incredibly overwhelming to go in and kind of been given the freedom to, right, this is your lab, everyone's gonna do what you tell them to do and let's have fun with it. When you walk into the atrium already, you get the feeling that this is something quite significant because you come in and walk across the footprint, you get an oversight of all the beam lines coming out from the storage ring and you can see the end stations and you can see they're all slightly different. There's all these pipes, these wires, these massive magnets around the place. It's just like going into another world. My name is Natasha Steven, I am a scientist at Plymouth University. I'm a geologist by training and I look at Martian meteorites. We're looking at how we can link up science that we can do on the samples in labs on Earth with the science that's being done in satellites and rovers on the surface of the planet. My name's Andrew Beale. I'm a chemist based at the research complex at Harwell. My interest in research, particularly diamond light source, is trying to understand why materials behave the way they do. With a view to designing better materials that can be used more efficiently in everyday life. My name is Johnny Brooks Bartlett. I'm a mathematician and I am a research student at the University of Oxford. What I do is X-ray crystallography. And what that means is I grow crystals, namely of proteins, and I use the X-rays at Diamond Light Source to irradiate those protein crystals to have a look at what the crystals are made of and the damage that the X-rays cause to those samples. Diamond Light Source is a facility that basically uses a particle accelerator to generate a very, very pure beam of energy, so a, a beam of light. We whiz electrons around really, really fast in a circle, and when those electrons get to almost the speed of light... This beam of electron particles, as it hits a bending magnet, the beam of electron particles goes one way, and then this light goes down this kind of line, and there's a beam line. And they utilise that beam that's generated in a range of different ways. Some of the beam lines can convert that into infrared, some of them convert it into x-rays, some of them use that for tomography, so to look at the shape and the structure of something in three dimensions. Some of them use it to look at the atomic scale features. That means that we can really study the small atomic structure of any material we like. And so I work with proteins, and proteins are way too small to see under a microscope. Therefore, we need to use x-rays to actually penetrate those crystals and understand what they look like from the patterns that are produced from the x-rays. Diamond is actually not a circle as such. It's a 48-sided polygon. So actually you've got straight sides and then a magnet to bend the, the electron, and a straight side and a magnet to bend the electron. At each point that the electron bends, that's when it starts to release light. It releases x-rays because of the speed that it goes at. So when those x-rays are released from the electron, they go through a series of mirrors and we can focus the x-ray beam using those mirrors into the shape and into the position we want. And then we fire that at a sample, and, and my samples are crystals that are made of proteins. There are about 45,000 known meteorites on Earth. They're made up of minerals, and the minerals are very, very similar in most cases to the minerals we have on Earth. With the Martian meteorites in particular, the most similar ones are like some of the volcanic rocks we might have from Iceland, Hawaii, from Italy. But they have structures in them which are completely unique to Mars, and these structures are very, very small. Diamond allows us to actually map these really unique Martian features because we can see them on a much smaller scale, and that allows us to then go back and reevaluate the spacecraft data and compare them, and we've actually been able to find some of those small-scale features in data sets that have existed on Earth for 10, 15 years already and they haven't been noticed before because nobody knew to look for them. It's really coming here and doing the measurements under the correct process conditions with this top of the range facility that you can see the subtle differences that make sample A better than sample B. A lot of the research we're doing at the moment is trying to design catalytic materials that can make fuels more efficiently and in a more sustainable way. Catalytic material is a material that can accelerate a, a chemical reaction so we can create our product more quickly and more efficiently. The companies that are highly engaged in this process, in utilising the facility here, are now getting slightly ahead of the competitors in the market. A protein is a biological machine. It's inside our bodies and it does anything you can think of inside the body. When you feel pain, it's usually proteins that carry the response 
from wherever it is in the body that you feel the pain to your brain. If you digest things, those digestive machines, they're proteins. And so if I'm a pharmaceutical company and I want to design a drug to say, stop you from feeling pain or to get your digestive system going, then I need to be able to see what the protein looks like. If I can see what this protein looks like, then I might be able to design drugs, small molecules that may bind to the protein to either stop it from doing its job or enhance it doing its job. So actually, protein crystallography has huge implications in structural-based drug design. For us, diamond light source is kind of the final step in our process. A lot of scientific analyses actually requires you to destroy the sample to generate the data that you want from it. And when we're talking about these rocks that have come from space, they are a finite resource. We don't know when we're going to get the next one. We can't predict it, unfortunately. We don't want to destroy them. So we try and use non-destructive techniques where we still have the sample at the end. So Diamond for us allows us to use our data as a starting point to actually generate data from our Martian meteorites on Earth that's the same process that the satellites and the rovers at and on Mars are actually doing as well. So it's exactly the same technique. There's a satellite orbiting Mars that's mapping the surface of Mars using infrared. We're using Diamond to generate that same infrared, but we're looking at the smaller scale features in our rocks and then we're directly comparing the two. Light interacts with all of the, the tiny, tiny molecules and atoms that the protein is made out of. And so my actual research is actually focused on studying that damage and how that damage in the protein affects the data that we see. So we sit down and we decide what strategy do we want to array at this crystal. And so there's this, this balancing game on how much data you want to collect. Is your protein crystal very sensitive? Once you've decided, then you sit down and take a data set, usually hundreds of images. Uh, but because I'm doing radiation damage studies myself, I just want to see the, the, the crystal die. I want to see it die. So I'll get thousands and thousands of images. For us, a lot of our measurements recently have been imaging type experiments. So rather than say, measuring a single point in a sample, we now actually do a map. So there we need to compromise a little bit on data quality, but we then get a two-dimensional or three-dimensional distribution of the components in our sample and how these change. And this is quite a novel way of measuring materials now. In the future, a lot of this process should become less trial and error and more design. And that way we can be more efficient with the materials that we're using. It's kind of a blueprint for us trying to realise in the longer term how we should do things better. One of the things that really inspired me to get involved in, in this science, I didn't just have to sit down and do maths on, on pen and paper. You know, I, I could walk into the lab, I could grow crystals, I could blast my crystals with x-rays. It's just, it's really exciting. Diamond Light Source is absolutely amazing. For me, it, it hasn't lost its novelty yet. It's just absolutely fantastic. It's a place that never stands still. So there's always new developments. The really fascinating thing is that when we carry out measurements here at Diamond Light Source, we see things that we didn't think we would see, that were even possible to see, and that people therefore couldn't even know if they were important or not for understanding why a material possesses the properties it does. The fact that you're the first to see it is very exciting. Diamond is definitely something that now I've used, I want to be able to go back. It was a fantastic experience to have people that were willing to try everything that you came up with. And it wasn't a question of, oh, well, we can't really do that because we don't have this. It's like, well, we don't have that, but we'll do our best to make it for you whilst you're here and we will make it happen. It's just ideas, inquiry, and then results. Sometimes things worked, sometimes they didn't. But when they worked, it gave us something amazing. And when they didn't, we knew to try something in a slightly different way. And it was science in its purest form, which was an amazing experience to have.